Since you've clicked on this video, odds are you haven't been sleeping all that well. You've probably researched and discovered that buying an overhead crane is no simple feat. You can sell your organs, you can sign up for drug trials, but unfortunately, because I just checked, it's not going to be enough to cover the cost of an overhead crane. So with this episode of Cranes 101, we're talking about buying versus financing your overhead crane and everything that goes with it. What's up guys, Devin here from Mozilla Companies and today we're covering the cost of an overhead crane, specifically buying versus financing it. In this video, we'll cover why you can't rent versus buying one, buying versus financing and everything under the sun, and we'll end with a recommendation about what you can do to prepare yourself for that financing process or buying process, whichever route you take. To help me tell this story, since it is a financing story, I wanted to make sure that we reached out to somebody who has more in-depth knowledge than anybody else in the finance field. So I reached out to Kathleen Fay, the Chief Finance Officer here at Mozilla Companies, and I started with just asking, if an overhead crane is so expensive, can I just rent it? Typically, um, overhead cranes are considered a capital expenditure, and most of them, in most cases, cannot be moved from the facility or they're permanently attached to either a structure or facility, so they're harder to transfer. Well, it makes sense to me. An overhead crane is heavy, hard to put up, harder to take down. So if you're going to buy one, do you just buy it outright, or can you finance it? Well, buying one outright avoids the interest um, charges that you'd incur during a lease or finance. Uh, it just depends on all your cash needs. If you need it to kind of run the working capital operations of the business, then you tend to maybe conserve your cash and uh, lease it over longer term. Otherwise, um, you tend to just buy it outright. Regardless of whether you buy outright or finance your overhead crane, there's no real protection either way. But Kathleen did tell me that if you do finance your crane, it will help improve your cash flow. So financing an overhead crane usually spreads out the payments equally in installments over anywhere from five to seven years, which could be up to 84 months of just equal standard cash payments versus a big outlay. Uh, as we mentioned before, though, you'll have to look into the tax consequences or implications because the IRS does give some tax savings and advantages to capitalizing things versus leasing it. So depending on the state or city you live in, you might have different tax codes that either help you buy out or help you finance your crane, and there might be penalties or deductions either way you go. But you've got to research that for yourself. And Kathleen did tell me that if you do decide to finance your crane, it can also help you with your soft costs. What are soft costs? Great question. Soft costs are expenses such as freight, installation, training possibly, just additional costs than the actual asset that you're purchasing. In most cases, people know the overall cost of the crane, including installation and freight. That's part of what's quoted on the job. So typically, if they go to a financing institution or a bank, they would know that. Um, it all depends though on the deal. So um, there could be cases where things transpire that come up later down the road and they could have to add it back in. It, it all depends on how flexible the financing institution is. And that's where your quote comes in. It'll tell you about your installation timeline, how much equipment you need, the labor incurred. All that will spill it out for you so you know how much you're going to finance if you will. But what I also found out was that financing can also improve your other lines of credit. Financing tends to move the debt to more long-term in nature, so it matches how you're gonna use the asset. Um, you tend to use those shorter than things like a line of credit for any other kind of short-term needs in cash and running the business, typical called working capital, whether you're covering anything from customers uh, paying a little slow on AR to vendor payments, you know, incurred in just buying stuff for resale. Did you know that sometimes a finance company can offer flexible financing? Neither did I. Flexible financing means you can offer different financing with such things like skip payments or longer fixed rate. Floating rates are also available, um, would just depend on how, again, the deal is structured. And in some cases, some of the leases are structured that allow you to return the equipment after the end of the lease. Now, skip payments are kind of cool because my father-in-law works as an electrician, so I'm used to the fact that during the winter, he doesn't get as much work and sometimes gets laid off. So it's cool to me to know that some banks can identify and accommodate for that. They can recognize your slow periods, you can negotiate that into the financing, and just have periods of time where you don't have to pay anything, knowing that your busy season will allow you to catch up. But in addition to that, financing can also help stabilize your monthly expenditures. So lease payments are usually equal amounts every month. So at the beginning of it, you know for the next period of time, whether that's five or seven years, how much the payments are going to be. And usually they're equal installments. So you can forecast that into any kind of cash needs you have. So financing will help you stabilize your monthly expenditures, but it also give you more equipment options. Maybe you don't just need one overhead crane. Maybe you need more, or you need some extra equipment to supplement your production value. With financing, it gives you more wiggle room. But when you're talking about more money, it means you have more risk involved. So I asked Kathleen, how many lenders should you talk to before really agreeing to go with one bank or another? 
So that really depends on what you feel comfortable with. I mean, people I would say typically go to at least two to get some comparable bids and they can use them against each other to kind of lower the rates. It all just depends on what you like that you got to feel comfortable with who you're doing business with. So sometimes people go with banks, large banks, small banks, or a specific leasing company. It really all just depends on your comfort level, but I would recommend at least getting two competitive quotes. So I would have figured that paying off your overhead crane early would have been a good thing, and sometimes it is, but as Kathleen told me, that there are some contracts where there's a clause or a key detail that says that if you do pay off your crane early, you're probably gonna incur a penalty fee. And it freaked me out because I probably would have missed something like that because I don't speak legalese. I'm not a lawyer, I've never been trained in that. So I asked Kathleen, what can somebody do that maybe isn't that competent in reading contracts do to protect themselves from stuff like that? And she offered some pretty good advice. Well, I'd recommend they find some advisor who can um, kind of help them through the, the language. A lot of people, it's, it's not usually too technical and legal but sometimes it could be. It depends on the institution you sign up with. So just always get a second opinion and ask someone to look it over and see if you've missed anything. Hopefully, this video is able to help you better understand some concepts between buying versus financing an overhead crane. If you like this video, head over to our YouTube channel and check out the rest of our Cranes 101 series. There's tons of videos there. We're going to be making a lot more. And consider subscribing while you're there. I don't want you to miss out on anything that we make in the future. At Mozilla Companies, we have a team of highly trained lifting specialists who want nothing more than to help you figure out your lifting project and they'd be happy to help you out in whatever way they can. If you're not sure about what overhead crane you need, we've actually developed a resource for you. If you click the link above, it'll take you to our 10 things to consider when buying an overhead crane checklist. You don't have to pay any money for it whatsoever. It's a resource built with you in mind to help you on your way to buying your first or upgrading to another overhead crane. If you'd like to schedule a crane consultation with one of our lifting specialists, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd be happy to help you however we can.